get your thoughts on manifestation, how people can manifest a life that they want, how they can create their life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all else will be added unto you. You know, I'm not interested in teaching people how to manifest greater income, or the perfect mate, or the right house, or the, or the, or the right and perfect job. That's sandbox metaphysics. It's for children. I saw a movie a few years ago, I happened to appear in it, called uh, The Secret. And in The Secret, I think it was made by an Australian, it may have been. Yeah, I thought, Rhonda yeah, Rhonda Byrne, she's from Australia. So that explains everything. So, <laughs> uh -oh, so, <laughs> just having fun, easy. just having fun. <laughs> anyway, she could, she could have easily have been an American, I promise you. <laughs> but but the point is that, that, that she was talking about the law of attraction and how to use it to attract things. And, she, and the movie was insisting that there's this great power that exists in all of us. We can create and attract anything we want. Just use the law of attraction. And then when it showed on the, on the, on the, on the screen, as examples of that, the guy walks out in front of his house and there's the car he's always wanted. A woman is sitting in her living room and suddenly an incredible diamond necklace appears on her bodice. Even a kid, eight-year-old kid, looks out in front of the, on the front door and a bicycle appears outside the front door. All these things, you know, will appear in your life just because you can use the law of attraction. And you know what my first thought was when I saw that movie? If we have such incredible power that we can attract everything and anything we want in our life. Why wasn't there one minute, not one minute, in a nearly two hour movie spent on how to create world peace or end suffering or, or, or put some kind of a halt to the incredible pain that millions of people on the planet are experiencing? How could anyone make a movie about the law of attraction and not spend 30 seconds talking about Let's use this enormous power we have to attract what really matters. And that said to me that, oh my God, even the New Age, even the so-called enlightened New Age, produces a movie about diamond necklaces on a bodice that appear suddenly and a new car in the driveway and not a single word about how to use this extraordinary power we're supposed to have to create a life that's better for all of us. It was the saddest thing I ever saw in my life. So I got to tell you that, you know, when our values are shifted, when somebody asks me, how can I manifest stuff in my life? I say to them, what do you want to manifest? A better you, more compassion, greater understanding, deeper wisdom, more love, or the perfect mate, or the, the better job. No, no, no. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. When I shifted, and by the way, this is not the pot calling the kettle black. I did this. I made these same mistakes. I made these same choices. I even did my affirmations for seven times 70, you know, and I, all the ways that you can manifest your own reality. I did it for, for, for many years, 20, 30, 40 years, until finally God said, Neil, Neil, first of all, it's not about you. Your life isn't about you. It's about everyone else whose life you touch and the way you touch them. That's number one. Number two, even if you had all those things, do you think that's what's going to make you happy? You want to know how many people have the perfect car, the perfect mate, the perfect job, and they're sad as hell? Hello, wake up. Hello, earth to kneel, earth to kneel. And I finally got it, that if I spent my life sharing the wisdom, the understanding, the clarity, and the love of God with as many people as I could reach, I would no longer have to search for the perfect mate, the perfect job, the perfect income, the perfect anything. It would all just crash in on me, and guess what? Hello? <laughs> you know, I mean... But even if it didn't, even if it didn't, it, it wouldn't matter. You, you don't find very many unhappy people who are spending their lives sharing compassion, patience, understanding, wisdom, and love with all those whose lives they touch. They're not worried about when their next hair appointment is, or what model and make the car in the driveway is, or how much their money they're making every every. Do you think the Dalai Lama cares about that? Do you think that Thich Nhat Hanh is worried about it? I, I don't think so. Friends, folks, humans everywhere, you got to hear me, man. We got to shift our values, shift our understanding, change our raison d'être, our reason for being 
It has nothing to do with any of this, I promise you.